Welcome to this presentation. In this training video, we will show you the features and capabilities of our Deep Foundation software programs DeepFND and Helix Pile. We will show you the software interactive interface and how you can actually define soil properties and stratigraphy in both software programs. DeepFND can do vertical and lateral pile analysis and it can do structural and geotechnical design of any pile type including non-helical and helical piles. The basic version of the software can do the design of non-helical piles like drilled, driven, caissons, CFA piles and drilled displacement piles and there is an additional optional module that allows you to do the design of helical piles. On the other hand, Helix Pile is our software program that does vertical and lateral pile analysis, structural and geotechnical design of helical piles only. So, the Helix Pile software and the Helical Pile module of DeepFND are identical. Helix Pile can be used by companies that do design of only helical piles. This is the graphical interactive interface of both our software programs Helix Pile and DeepFND. First of all, the software is built in tabs. These tabs include tools that can help you define your different model options, define properties, define analysis methods, define different design standards and safety factors, choose to perform settlement analysis, define lateral options, view results, export reports, etc. On the left side of the screen we see the design sections area. In our Deep Foundation software programs these could be also named as piles, so you can use the different design sections in order to simulate different piles around your, your project. So you can right click here and you can add new sections and new sections will be opened here in different tabs which you can access independently and you can define the local parameters of the different piles. In different design sections you can include different soil properties, different stratigraphies, different pile types, uh, different pile sections, uh, loading, etc. Here down we see the calculation buttons. The upper button is to calculate the selected design section which is whichever is selected here, currently this is base model and the other button is to calculate all the design sections existing in this list at the same time. On the right side of the screen we see this yellow assumptions table which marks which methods are selected so far for the current project. In the middle we see the model area which several items will highlight so the load, the pile itself, uh, they highlight when I take my mouse over them. Whatever highlights I can double click and I can edit its properties really fast as I will show you. Down here we have the stages. Uh, in our Deep Foundation software programs these are supposed to be loading stages. So we can right click and we can add as many stages as we wish. And next when we will define the loads we can set a different load magnitude for each stage. This way we can include in different stages our compression and tension conditions and we can add further stages where we can define different analysis options. The first thing you have to do when start using DeepFND or Helix Pile in any Deep Foundation model is to actually review the geotechnical report and create a list of soils with their soil properties that you will later assign to your stratigraphies. To do this, you have to press the button Edit Soil Type Data when this dialog appears. In this dialog on the left side, you see a list of already created soils. These are the default options in our software programs. And you can expand this list, you can add new soils, you can delete them. And you have to access all these soils where you can define the different soil properties here on the right. For each of these soils you have to define first the color and name they will appear on the screen if you assign it to a boring, like this F layer here, this fill layer. You can define the soil type, so for each of these soils the soil type can be a sand, clay, 
silt, rock intermediate zone material or gravel and according to this selection you have to define the general soil properties so for a sand or a silt you have to define the unit weights, the cohesion and the friction angle and for a clay you also have to define the default behavior of your clay which can be drained or undrained behavior according to this selection, drained or undrained you have to define the drained shear strength of the clay and the friction angle or the undrained shear strength of the clay in the elastoplastic tab you have to define the soil model, the soil behavior of this specific soil which can be elastoplastic, exponential or exponential with a linear grip and based on this selection you have to define the loading loading elasticity parameters of the soil the exponent, uh, the linear grip parameters etc. Finally again for each of these soils you have to go to the lateral tab where you need to define the lateral soil properties. So for a sand this could be the subgrade reaction modulus, for a clay this would be the E50 value and for a rock this would be the KRM value. These properties can be defined manually. You can access all these boxes and you can type your own properties from your keyboard if you have detailed geotechnical report or based on your experience. You can press this button and this dialog expands to the right where we provide an SPT estimator. So based on the NSPT value that you can define here in this bar, you will see as I move this that these properties are automatically estimated and if I wish I can go to the elastoplastic tab, press this elasticity modulus box and I can also estimate uh, the loading elasticity parameters of the soil so this is the second way to do it and the third way is to use these small arrows that are actually partial estimation tools some of them will propose you directly values based on different soil types and some others, like for this ultimate bond resistance for the grouted piles, uh, will propose scientific methods. So if I brush here to estimate this property uh, and use Bustamante, it will ask me to specify the pressure meter test value PL. If I press OK, this will expand automatically and will drive me to define the pressure meter test value PL. And if I say something, let's say 0 0.8, and go back and choose again Bustamante, it will open some scientific graphs uh, according to different curves, soil curves, the descriptions are here I can select the soil curve from down here and if I go on the graph I can estimate a soil property based on the PL value here I can choose to accept this value and this will change the value here so to summarize it, you have to create a list of all the different soil types you need to use. You have for each one of them to set the soil type, uh, the general soil properties based on this soil type, and this, uh, the elastoplastic properties, uh, the soil model, and the lateral soil properties. These soil properties can be defined manually. You can use the SPT estimator of the software program or you can use these arrows that are partial estimation tools. Some of them will propose values, some others will lead you uh, in scientific methods and perhaps you will be asked to define any of these properties here where it says test data. I will press OK and this will save my changes uh, in the soil types and it will also save the new soil types I just created. Next, you have to define the actual stratigraphy. By default, uh, DeepFND and Helix Pile include Boring 1 here in this drop down, uh, which includes these three soil types, these three soil layers. I can edit this boring. So here I can edit Boring 1 by defining top of the soil layer elevation and soil type below this elevation. So I can do some modifications here. I will show uh, that uh, the clay starts from minus 5. Uh, at minus 10, I have this sand, and at minus 15.8, uh, um, uh, another soil layer starts, like a GT soil. 
I can keep doing this, I can keep adding top of the soil layer elevations and soil type below these elevations. Also here I can choose to add new borings, so I can add as many different borings as I wish and I will go to boring 2 and I will define something different. I will say that at minus uh, 10 feet I have uh, the sand, S1, and at minus uh, 25 it starts a glacial till. I can do this, I can define the different boring properties here for all the borings. When I close I will see that boring 1 is updated and I can also go here in this drop down and I can see that I can easily change from boring to boring. What else I can do is that I can access this new section 1 it will open in a different tab here and I can select a different stratigraphy from this drop down. So I can have different stratigraphies assigned in different design sections. So I can really simulate different piles around my project. If we go to the properties tab, here we can press this button SPT and here we can add SPT records. We can add as many different SPT records as we wish in this list and for each one of them we can define depths, SPT value and RQD for our rocks. If I close it later I can assign an SPT record if I wish so and from this SPT record I can choose to estimate uh, the different properties. I can select here which properties to estimate using the SPT record. So the software will use the stratigraphy that I defined to keep uh, the soil types to recognize that this will be indeed the sand, a clay, a sand, etc. And it will estimate the properties using the SPT record. If I have not assigned a record, then it will use the soil properties that we manually edited before. Also here you can choose to import the CPT record, so you can add the CPT record from a tab delimited file, from an Excel file, and the software will uh, estimate uh, the soil properties using the CPT record. Visit our websites in order to review additional information or software programs, useful theory, documents, examples and training videos. If you wish to receive our pricing, special offers, or if you wish to arrange a free online presentation, feel free to contact us. Thank you for watching this video.